Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Masaiki Sugawara of NEC and also the chairman of DBEG. DBEG is the uh, ISDBT promoting organization in Japan to the world. So I am very much interested in the next generation TV status, not only in Japan, but also in the world. And I'm very happy uh, to uh, participate in uh, this session. So this is what I will uh, talk today. So, uh, so my, today's my top main topic is uh, R&D uh, project toward next generation TV. But before then, I'd like to briefly uh, explain the background of uh, that project. So uh, let me start by introducing. Okay, uh, talking about uh, the background. So this is a brief history uh, of the television broadcasting in Japan. As you can see, the, uh, the digitalization as well as uh, new services. Uh, have been introduced uh, uh, into satellite broadcasting first, then uh, terrestrial followed. So uh, UHD TV service has already started via satellite last year. So uh, next issue is how to introduce UHD TV into DTTV. And this uh, uh, slide summarizes the brief history of DTTV systems in the world. The obviously, the uh, later adopted uh, system can uh, use uh, the new technology, newer technologies. And uh, then once uh, such kind of newer technologies are uh, proved uh, to be effective, then following systems uh, can use it. And this is the system concept of the hybrid cast, uh, Japanese uh, integrated broadband broadcast systems. It uh, started in the year of uh, 2013. And since then, uh, uh, many uh, applications for various services have uh, been developed and well accepted. So this is the statics start uh, for the uh, hybrid cast penetration. You can see the, uh, 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 on the red line, uh, the current uh, penetration ratio of actual connected uh, receiver ratio is 25% uh, now. And is predicted uh, will proceed 40% in several years. Uh, that means uh, IBB system uh, is uh, well established and well accepted in Japan. And this uh, is a business perspective of DTTV uh, stations in Japan. So uh, DTTV services are considered as a very fundamental uh, services and also very popular services. And many stations are available uh, all over the, uh, uh, Japan. Uh, and a number of relay stations are needed uh, to cover the nationwide uh, due to uh, the uh, geographic reason. Uh, that means uh, there is a little space uh, uh, in terms of uh, spectrum. Uh, in a business perspective, uh, the major uh, nationwide networks affiliate with BS and 4K BS services. Um, also, uh, all, all those broadcasters are the major content creators and uh, providers. And this uh, is the uh, roadmap uh, of the NYC. Uh, for the MIC means Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications is a government. Uh, for the 4K and 8K broadcasting uh, to uh, describe the uh, out, uh, timeline uh, for the introduction of 4K and 8K broadcasting uh, in uh, each media. 
According to uh, roadmap, uh, the 4K, 8K broadcasting via satellite uh, uh, was launched uh, the last year. So uh, you can see the, on the uh, uh, table the many uh, broadcasters, including major DTTV network affiliates, uh, have already started 4K and 8K broadcasting. So the uh, next issue is how about uh, the DTTV? So there are, is a still uh, a difficult issues uh, to be solved, uh, such as technologies or cost uh, to introduce uh, uh, 4K or 8K broadcasting into uh, terrestrial broadcasting. So uh, to uh, solve that kind of problems uh, or issues, uh, uh, several R&D projects uh, uh, toward next generation DTTV <laughs> have been or are uh, uh, being uh, conducted. Uh, so I'd like to explain that uh, here. Uh, this is MIC's Ireland Project Overview. Uh, they are uh, categorized into uh, two types. Uh, one is R&D for new 4K, 8K terrestrial broadcasting technologies which uh, uses the uh, entire four megahertz, uh, six megahertz band uh, uh, for the new services. And the other type is R&D for 2K, 4K hybrid test broadcasting technology, which uh, coexist uh, with the current uh, 2K broadcasting service within the uh, same six megahertz band. So I call uh, this uh, approach A, and uh, uh, there are two proposals for approach A. And A1 <coughs> uses FDM plus MIMO, and A2 uses LDM. And uh, the other one I call approach B. So let me uh, explain up about approach A first. So this is, is the uh, overview of the proposal A1. It uses FDM uh, for multiplexing new 4K service with current 2K services. So uh, uh, the figure on the right uh, shows the uh, three st layers system, which introduced uh, the 4K services, uh, adding to the current one thing mobile and uh, HD services. And for uh, uh, added 4K services, MIMO is used for uh, more transmission uh, capacity. So obviously you can understand uh, uh, the uh, improved coding technology is key uh, because the uh, uh, segment number is reduced for uh, 2K and also a uh, small number is assigned to 4K broadcasting. So uh, improved coding technologies uh, uh, is investigated. So this is the uh, result uh, uh, of the required video TS rate, uh, both for 2K encoder and 4K encoders, with uh, uh, using the uh, state of the technologies. So in terms of uh, 2K encoder, so next generation MPEG-2 encoder with field uh, frame structure adaptive coding, uh, was uh, uh, compared with the current uh, uh, encoder, encoder A and encoder B, which uh, is used in actual terrestrial broadcasting uh, operating at 35 megabit per second. Uh, to achieve the same picture quality, the uh, <coughs> bit rate of 9 to 9.5 megabit per second is needed both uh, objective and subjective assessment. And the, uh, uh, in terms of 4K encoders, the state of the art uh, uh, product VC9700 uh, is used to compare the current uh, uh, VC8150, uh, which is uh, being used for 4K broadcasting via satellite, uh, operating at 35 megabit per second. The required uh, bit rate uh, is uh, derived uh, 17 to 18 
megabit per second uh, from both uh, objective and subjective assessment. So uh, the, uh, the feasibility may be summarized as in this table uh, uh, in terms of segment distribution. So one segment is uh, assigned to the uh, layer one, one thing service, and eighth segment is uh, assigned to the uh, layer C uh, for current 2K services, which uh, provide uh, a TS rate uh, of the 11 megabit per second, which satisfy the uh, uh, simulation result. And for 4K uh, services, layer B is assigned with uh, a four segment uh, in horizontal polarization plus uh, four segment uh, in a uh, vertical polarization. So in total, eight segments are assigned. Uh, if the modulation scheme is 1024 QAM, then uh, the TS rate becomes 18 <coughs> megabits per second, which satisfies uh, the uh, uh, evaluation test result. And let me go to the uh, proposal A2, uh, which uses LDM for multiplexing new 4K service with current 2K service. In this case, uh, the most important the parameter is uh, injection uh, level, uh, not to uh, uh, cause uh, the interference to the current services. So some measurement uh, was conducted. And uh, uh, based on that result, uh, uh, service area simulation uh, was also conducted. So this is a me measurement of injection level. Um, for upper layer, uh, that means that 2K current services, uh, some uh, modulation scheme uh, from 64QM to 16. Okay, uh, uh, tested uh, varying uh, the uh, lower levels, 4K service level, uh, uh, injection level is changing. And uh, the threshold is derived, and uh, uh, threshold plus 5 dB margin is uh, defined as the injection level, uh, as you see uh, on the table. In case of 64 QAM, injection level of two, uh, 23 dB is needed. So based on that uh, result, uh, some simulation was conducted. So in this case, uh, uh, the step one is uh, 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 using uh, is a case where the uh, 64 QAM used for 2K broadcasting. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, injection level of 23 dB uh, should be satisfied. And uh, a 4K uh, modulation scheme changes uh, 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 16 QAM, 32 QAM, and 64 and two, uh, 55. So uh, the result as shown on the left, uh, you can see the uh, uh, service area for 4K is changing uh, by uh, is changed by changing the modulation scheme. The more lo robust uh, uh, modulation scheme provide uh, the wider uh, uh, service area, but still uh, it's not narrower than the current 2K service. And then uh, as a step two, uh, the uh, uh, 4K uh, uh, emission power is increased. Uh, in this case, uh, the uh, 4K modulation scheme is uh, the 64 QAM. So because of this, uh, the, uh, uh, in order to avoid the interference uh, to the 2K uh, services, uh, 2K service should employ the more robust uh, modulation scheme. So, uh, 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 increasing the uh, 4K power uh, make uh, the 4K service area wider, and also at the same time, uh, 2K uh, service area becomes a little bit wider, wider 
uh, because uh, it employs uh, the uh, more robust uh, modulation scheme. Okay, and then uh, I'd like to approach B. Uh, it's an RD for new 4K, 8K uh, terrestrial broadcasting technology, which uh, uses entire 6 megahertz for new services. But I suppose uh, this uh, was covered uh, uh, on the uh, Wednesday uh, session here, so I just uh, briefly touch it. So uh, the, uh, the basic requirement of this uh, approach is uh, UHD services for fixed reception and HD services for mobile reception uh, within 6 megahertz bandwidth, and details are still under discussion. And basic concept is uh, uh, three concepts. Uh, inherit and upgrade the functions of current DTTB the, because ISDBT is uh, well accepted. And also expand the capacity and improve the flexibility, the second point. And the third point is introduce new technology. Uh, uh, here new is new to ISDBT. Uh, such as uh, LDPC and non-uniform constellations. So this uh, uh, slide uh, uh, explained uh, uh, the expansion of the capacity and the improvement of flexibility. But you know well. Uh, and the uh, introduction of a new technology such as uh, LDPC for FEC and uh, uh, non uniform constellation, and also uh, MIMO is an option to uh, expand the transmission capacity. So, this uh, table uh, 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 compares the specification of the current ISDBT and the new proposed system. And this uh, is the uh, typical uh, performance improvement of the uh, newly uh, proposed system. It uh, uh, increases uh, the uh, transmission ra uh, rate uh, by 10 megabit per second at the uh, uh, same required CNR or uh, improved CNR of 7 dB at the uh, uh, same uh, uh, transmission capacity. And a large scale. Uh, field trial is, uh, was uh, conducted uh, uh, in Tokyo and uh, Nagoya. Uh, in Nagoya, the SFN is also, uh, was also t tested, and uh, the test result was very good. So uh, following up these uh, uh, MIC projects, uh, MIC is now uh, preparing uh, the new testing project, which is uh, the four-year project for future broadcast service. Actually, it just started this April. And uh, the point is to enhance uh, the spectrum efficiency, and the final uh, uh, aim uh, is to realize the future broadcasting services. Okay, let me summarize uh, what I have uh, talked to today uh, about the next generation TV status in Japan. So as a background, uh, ISDBT offers widespread HDTV services and hybrid cast provide advanced IBB service platform. And DTTV broadcasters are playing a major role as are the content providers and distributors. And advanced or next generation services, including 4K, 8K services via satellite, has already started. And next generation DTTV R&D and testing projects as a follow up of 4K, 8K roadmap. And uh, national R&D projects have been conducted for five years so far. So approach A1, A2, and the new for, uh, approach A1, A2 is two uh, 2K, 4K hybrid test ray broadcasting systems. And approach B uh, is uh, the new 4K, 8K test ray broadcasting system uh, 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 
have been and will be investigated in the new project. And the approach A1 uses FDM plus MIMO, A2 uses LDM, and approach B introduced is uh, in expanded parameters as well as new technologies such as LDPC uh, and no con uh, uniform constellations. And now for year testing project for future pro uh, broadcast service has just started in April. Okay, thank you for your kind of attention. <laughs> Thank you.